Welcome to this demo on installing OpenShift Data Foundation Multi-Cloud Gateway on Spectrum Fusion HCI. So first of all, we are going to the Spectrum Fusion HCI OpenShift user interface, navigate to the Operator Hub, and search for Data Foundation. So then we select the OpenShift Data Foundation operator in here and choose to install it. We leave all the parameters as default here. So we install to the recommended namespace, uh, select the latest version 4.10 that is available for the 4.10 OpenShift version cluster. Leave the update approval to automatic, which will give us minor updates uh, on the fly and enable the console integration for OpenShift. So let's go ahead and install the operator, which will usually take two to three minutes. I've done a bit of a speed up over here to, in order to save time. So this will allocate the OpenShift Data Foundation OpenShift storage namespace and uh, download and install the pod, which is now just about to happen. And then we can proceed with the final installation of OpenShift uh, Data Foundation by creating a so-called storage cluster configuration. As you can see, the pods are coming up over here that are triggered along with the operator deployment, uh, which are essentially the um, core pods. And once that is done, we can refresh the web console, as you can see over here. And now we're getting a new entry called Data Foundation. There are not yet any routes while the operator is still being deployed, but uh, now we can essentially create the backing storage system. So we are selecting as a deployment, the multi-cloud object gateway only installation. In contrast to the full deployment, this will only apply the OpenShift, um, the multi-cloud object gateway, and we select IBM Spectrum Fusion as a storage class. And this is in fact a Spectrum scale provided storage class on the Spectrum Fusion. So this will serve as the backing store for our multi-cloud object gateway data store. We leave all the other options as is, uh, summarize the options over here, and then we are going to deploy the storage system for OpenShift Data Foundation. As this probably takes another five to 10 minutes, I'm also going to speed up this video recording a bit while the pods are coming up. I'm talking a bit back and forth to show you the progress. First of all, we're getting a database um, persistent volume claim allocated that then allows us to bring up the multi-cloud gateway database pod, which just happened now. And then we already got uh, the S3 route that we are using at the end to access the um, S3 endpoint. And the GUI is uh, coming up slowly. There are still the options to create the real kind of multi-cloud uh, backing uh, storage options here in OpenShift Data Foundation but it is something we are not going to use for this particular demo. We are looking forward to getting the storage system initialized here. It is already saying available, but still we might uh, usually need to wait uh, one or two minutes before everything is really ready to be consumed. You can see that pods are still getting initialized. So the next pod to come up is the backing storage pod that actually stores our S3 data. And as you can see, it is deployed on the Spectrum Fusion um, persistent volume. Uh, so now, I mean, when we look at the status, it, it shows us that the storage system is deployed. So most likely we can now start with the final steps to really use OpenShift Data Foundation. But as you can see over here, 
from an object storage perspective, uh, the GUI at least is not yet fully initialized. Uh, the service is not yet available. So probably again, another one or two minutes. Also, we can see that uh, in fact, the important pods, including the endpoint that is taking the S3 requests uh, are already up and running. A uh, storage system here shows now the created, uh, which gives a good indication that things are still progressing. And also the object storage now finally got a status, which is almost ready. Uh, it shows uh, at green on the data resiliency, the object service is just about to come up. So now I'm, I'm getting a bit bold and uh, we switch directly to one of my projects uh, to then do the final step uh, in the configuration by actually creating a object bucket claim. The object bucket claim, we need to get an endpoint and a, a bucket and the credentials to be able to access our Nuba backing store. So I put in a test name, select Nuba as the storage class, and then the bucket class is predefined by this default backing storage. So I'm going ahead and trying the object bucket claim. And as you can probably see on the top, it is bound, meaning that the service is indeed operational in the meantime. And on the very bottom of this page, we get all the information of required to access the object storage. So this object bucket claim data, if we reveal the values, we get an HTTPS endpoint, we get a bucket provisioned, and we get the usual S3, S access key, secret key combinations. So in the next step, we will in fact use that from a remote system, remote to the spectrum scale HCI, and uh, try to access the S3 endpoint uh, using the credentials we just set up over here to demonstrate that uh, the spectrum scale HCI with the ODF multi-cloud gateway will in fact be able to serve general purpose uh, S3 endpoint. And therefore, we need to identify the externally reachable route. And it's in fact the different endpoint over here. So this is an address where we need to use from a system outside of the OpenShift cluster. So let's just quickly check back if our storage cluster is now available. And as you can see over here, everything looks good from a status perspective. Uh, for the OCS storage cluster, the OpenShift Data Foundation storage cluster. So let's move on and use a command line to actually use the AWS client to connect to our object storage. So as you can see, this is my laptop completely remote to the HCI system. I create a new profile here for the AWS CLI, so the general purpose S3 uh, client. And I'm now going to put in the access key that we just generated with the object bucket claim. And from the same source, I'm retrieving the secret access key. I do not specify any region or the, any default output format. And now I'm going to assemble a command line uh, that allows me to access the buckets in this particular account. So I'm using this profile for the AWS client and I need to change the um, endpoint. Uh, in the first try, I did a uh, wrong uh, endpoint. So let's just focus on the second try here. There, I'm putting the, in the address to the HCI. And as you can see, 
I can do an S3LS command and I'm getting back uh, my test object bucket claim uh, subdirectory in there. So, or my bucket in there. And now I can actually do a bucket listing. And while Alexander put in uh, some content from a separate S3 client in here, you can see that I'm able to browse the data and also to access that object. That actually concludes the demo uh, for the OpenShift Data Foundation with the spectrum scale underlying access to the S3 data exposed by OpenShift Data Foundation. Thanks a lot for watching.